Welcome to our channel. Here, we dive deep into the fascinating world of ancient civilizations, exploring the incredible achievements, cultures, and histories that have shaped humanity. Join us as we uncover the stories of the past, from the Sumerians to modern times, and connect them to our world today. Part 1, Origins of the Sumerian Civilization The Sumerian Civilization, one of the earliest known cultures to develop in the fertile lands of Mesopotamia, stands as a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of ancient human societies. The origins of the Sumerians are shrouded in mystery, but through careful study of archaeological findings and ancient texts, a clearer picture of their beginnings has emerged. The Sumerians are believed to have emerged during the Abade period, around 4500 BCE, in the southern part of Mesopotamia, which is modern-day Iraq. The Abade period marks a time of significant change in the region, with the development of agricultural practices and the establishment of permanent settlements. It is during this period that the first signs of what would later become the Sumerian civilization began to appear. The Abade culture, named after the site of Tel Al-Abade where its remains were first discovered, laid the foundation for the later Sumerian civilization. The Abade people were among the first to engage in large-scale farming, utilizing the fertile land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers to grow crops such as barley and wheat. The abundance of food allowed for population growth and the establishment of small villages, which gradually evolved into more complex urban centers. One of the earliest and most significant of these urban centers was Eridu, which the Sumerians considered to be the first city in the world. According to Sumerian mythology, Eridu was the home of the god Enki, the deity of wisdom and water, and it was here that civilization itself was believed to have begun. Archaeological evidence supports the idea that Eridu was one of the earliest settlements in southern Mesopotamia, with its origins dating back to around 5400 BCE. The rise of Eridu marked the beginning of the Sumerian civilization's growth. Over the next several centuries, other cities began to emerge, including Uruk, Ur, Lagash, and Kish. These cities were not only centers of population and economic activity but also hubs of cultural and religious life. Each city was centered around a ziggurat, a massive terrace structure that served as a temple to the city's patron deity. The development of these cities was closely tied to the Sumerians' mastery of agriculture and their ability to control the waters of the Tigris and Euphrates. The Sumerians developed sophisticated irrigation systems, including canals, dikes, and reservoirs, which allowed them to manage the unpredictable floodwaters of the rivers. This control over water resources not only ensured a stable food supply but also supported the growth of trade and industry. Trade was a vital component of the Sumerian economy, and their cities became centers of commerce that attracted merchants and traders from across the region. The Sumerians traded goods such as grain, textiles, and pottery, as well as valuable commodities like metals and gemstones, with neighboring regions such as Anatolia, the Levant, and the Persian Gulf. This trade network helped to spread Sumerian culture and influence far beyond the boundaries of Mesopotamia. The social structure of the Sumerians was complex and stratified, with a clear hierarchy based on wealth, occupation, and religious authority. At the top of this hierarchy were the priest kings, known as Ensi, who ruled over the city-states and were believed to be chosen by the gods. Below them were the nobles, who held large estates and had significant influence in the governance of the city. The majority of the population consisted of commoners, including farmers, artisans, and laborers, who worked the land and produced goods for the city's economy. Slaves, often prisoners of war or those who had fallen into debt, occupied the lowest rung of the social ladder. The Sumerians were also known for their religious beliefs and practices, which were deeply intertwined with their daily lives. They believed in a pantheon of gods and goddesses, each associated with natural forces and aspects of human life. The Sumerians believed that the gods controlled everything, 
from the fertility of the land to the outcome of battles, and they performed elaborate rituals and ceremonies to appease them. The Sumerian religion was centered around the temples, which were not only places of worship but also served as economic and administrative centers. The temples controlled large amounts of land and resources, and the priests who managed them held significant power. The Sumerians believed that their cities were under the protection of the gods, and the well-being of the city depended on the favor of its patron deity. One of the most important deities in the Sumerian pantheon was An, the god of the heavens, who was considered the king of the gods. Other major gods included Enlil, the god of air and storms, who was believed to have separated heaven and earth, Enki, the god of wisdom and water, who was associated with the creation of humanity and the arts of civilization, and Inanna, the goddess of love, beauty, and warfare, who played a central role in many Sumerian myths. The Sumerians' religious beliefs were reflected in their art and architecture, which often depicted scenes of worship, mythological stories, and the gods themselves. The ziggurats, with their massive size and imposing presence, were a physical representation of the Sumerians' devotion to their gods and their desire to connect with the divine. As the Sumerian civilization grew and developed, it began to leave a lasting impact on the surrounding regions. The Sumerians' innovations in agriculture, trade, and governance influenced neighboring cultures, and their language, Sumerian, became the lingua franca of the ancient Near East for centuries. The Sumerians also developed one of the earliest known systems of writing, cuneiform, which would become a crucial tool for communication, record-keeping, and the transmission of knowledge. The Sumerians' achievements in various fields laid the groundwork for the development of later civilizations in Mesopotamia, such as the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. Their contributions to human history are still studied and admired today, and their legacy can be seen in many aspects of modern society, from our systems of writing and law to our understanding of urbanization and statecraft. In conclusion, the origins of the Sumerian civilization can be traced back to the Abade period, when the first signs of organized agriculture and permanent settlements began to appear in southern Mesopotamia. Over the centuries, the Sumerians developed a complex and sophisticated society, marked by the rise of city-states, the invention of writing, and the establishment of religious and political institutions. Their achievements in various fields, from agriculture and trade to religion and governance, had a profound impact on the development of human civilization and continue to influence our world today. Part 2. The Dawn of Urbanization the Sumerians are credited with creating some of the world's first true cities, a monumental shift in human society that set the stage for the development of complex civilizations. The transformation from small, agrarian communities to bustling urban centers was a gradual process that unfolded over several centuries, beginning in the Abade period and reaching its peak during the Uruk period, around 3500 to 3100 BCE. The city of Uruk, one of the most prominent Sumerian cities, serves as a prime example of this urbanization process. Located in southern Mesopotamia, Uruk is often referred to as the world's first true city due to its size, complexity, and influence on the surrounding region. At its height, Uruk was home to tens of thousands of people, making it one of the largest cities of its time. The development of Uruk and other Sumerian cities was closely tied to the agricultural surplus generated by the fertile lands of Mesopotamia. The ability to produce more food than was needed for subsistence allowed for population growth and the specialization of labor. As more people settled in the cities, new occupations emerged, including artisans, traders, and administrators. This specialization of labor was a key factor in the growth of urban centers, as it allowed for the development of new technologies, crafts, and industries. One of the most significant aspects of Sumerian urbanization was the construction of monumental architecture, particularly the ziggurat. These massive terrace structures, made of mud brick, 
served as the focal points of Sumerian cities. The ziggurat was both a religious and administrative center, housing the temple of the city's patron deity as well as the offices of priests and other officials. The construction of these structures required a high degree of organization and coordination, reflecting the complexity of Sumerian society. The rise of cities like Uruk also brought about the development of new forms of governance. As urban centers grew in size and complexity, the need for organized leadership became increasingly important. The Sumerians developed a form of city-state governance, where each city was an independent political entity, ruled by a local leader known as the Ensi or Lugal. These rulers were responsible for maintaining order, overseeing religious ceremonies, and managing the city's resources, including its agricultural surplus and trade. The Sumerian city-states were often centered around a temple complex, which played a central role in both the religious and economic life of the city. The temple, dedicated to the city's patron deity, was not only a place of worship but also a major economic institution. The temple controlled large amounts of land, livestock, and labor, and it was responsible for the distribution of food and other resources to the city's inhabitants. This control over resources gave the temple and its priests significant power and influence within the city. Trade was another important aspect of Sumerian urbanization. The Sumerians were skilled traders and established extensive trade networks that stretched across the ancient Near East. They traded goods such as grain, textiles, pottery, and metalwork, as well as luxury items like lapis lazuli and carnelian, which were highly prized by the elites of Sumerian society. The wealth generated by trade contributed to the growth and prosperity of Sumerian cities and helped to support the development of new industries and crafts. The urbanization of Sumer also had a profound impact on social structures. As cities grew, so did the divisions between different social classes. The Sumerians developed a highly stratified society, with clear distinctions between the ruling elite, priests, merchants, artisans, and common laborers. The ruling class, which included the ensi, nobles, and high-ranking priests, lived in large, well-appointed homes and enjoyed a higher standard of living than the common people. In contrast, the majority of the population lived in modest homes and worked as farmers, laborers, or craftsmen. The growth of Sumerian cities also led to the development of new forms of art and culture. The Sumerians were skilled craftsmen and artists, and their cities were adorned with elaborate carvings, statues, and other works of art. Cylinder seals, small engraved stones used to stamp images onto clay tablets, are one of the most distinctive forms of Sumerian art. These seals often depicted scenes of religious rituals, mythological stories, or daily life, and they were used by both the elite and common people to sign documents and mark property. The Sumerians also developed a rich literary tradition, much of which was centered around their religious beliefs and mythology. The Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the oldest known works of literature, is a Sumerian epic poem that tells the story of the hero Gilgamesh and his quest for immortality. This and other Sumerian literary works provide valuable insights into the values, beliefs, and daily life of the Sumerian people. The urbanization of Sumer was not without its challenges. The rapid growth of cities placed a strain on the environment, particularly the agricultural land that supported the population. The Sumerians relied heavily on irrigation to water their crops, but the overuse of irrigation led to problems such as salinization, where the soil became too salty to support agriculture. This, in turn, led to food shortages and social unrest, as the population struggled to feed itself. Additionally, the city-states of Sumer were often in competition with one another, leading to frequent conflicts and warfare. The desire for control over resources, such as water and fertile land, drove much of this conflict, and the Sumerians developed advanced military technologies, including the use of chariots and bronze weapons, to defend their cities. 
These conflicts weakened the city-states and made them vulnerable to external invasions, which eventually contributed to the decline of the Sumerian civilization. Despite these challenges, the Sumerians' achievements in urbanization had a lasting impact on the development of human civilization. Their cities served as models for later civilizations in Mesopotamia and beyond, and their innovations in governance, architecture, and trade laid the groundwork for the development of complex societies. The legacy of Sumerian urbanization can still be seen today in the modern cities that continue to grow and evolve, building upon the foundations laid by the ancient Sumerians. In conclusion, the dawn of urbanization in Sumer marked a pivotal moment in human history. The development of cities like Uruk transformed Sumerian society, leading to the rise of complex social structures, new forms of governance, and a rich cultural heritage. The Sumerians' achievements in urbanization not only shaped their own civilization but also influenced the development of later cultures in the ancient Near East and beyond. As we continue to study and learn from the Sumerians, we gain a deeper understanding of the origins of urban life and the challenges and opportunities that come with it. Part 3, Sumerian Religion and Mythology The Sumerians were a deeply religious people, and their beliefs and practices permeated every aspect of their lives. Religion was the cornerstone of Sumerian society, influencing not only their daily activities but also their government, art, and literature. The Sumerians worshipped a pantheon of gods and goddesses, each associated with natural forces and human endeavors, and they believed that the gods controlled all aspects of the universe. At the heart of Sumerian religion was the belief in a pantheon of gods who governed the world and its inhabitants. The Sumerians believed that these gods had created the world and all living things, and that they continued to play an active role in the affairs of humanity. The gods were thought to reside in the heavens, the earth, and the underworld, and they were worshipped in temples that served as the centers of religious and social life in Sumerian cities. The chief god in the Sumerian pantheon was An, the god of the heavens, who was considered the king of the gods. and was believed to be the father of all the other gods, and his authority was absolute. However, An was not involved in the day-to-day -day affairs of humans, leaving that responsibility to other gods. Enlil, the god of air and storms, was one of the most important deities in Sumerian religion. Enlil was believed to have separated heaven and earth and was associated with both creation and destruction. He was also considered the god of kingship and was believed to grant rulers the right to govern. Enki, the god of water and wisdom, was another major deity in the Sumerian pantheon. Enki was associated with the life-giving waters of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, as well as with the arts of civilization, such as writing, agriculture, and craftsmanship. According to Sumerian mythology, Enki was the creator of humanity, having fashioned humans from clay to serve the gods. Enki was also known for his wisdom and cunning, and he played a central role in many Sumerian myths. Inanna, the goddess of love, beauty, and warfare, was one of the most revered and complex deities in Sumerian religion. Inanna was associated with both fertility and destruction, embodying the dual nature of life and death. She was worshipped as a goddess of love and procreation, but also as a warrior who led her people into battle. Inanna's myths often depict her as a powerful and independent figure, who challenged the authority of the other gods and pursued her own desires. The Sumerians believed that their gods were not distant or indifferent beings, but rather active participants in the world. The gods were thought to control everything from the weather to the outcome of battles, and the Sumerians believed that it was their duty to appease the gods through rituals and offerings. Temples, known as ziggurats, were built in the center of Sumerian cities to honor the gods, and these structures served as the focal points of religious life. Ziggurats were massive terrace structures, made of mud brick, that rose high above the surrounding city. At the top of the ziggurat was a shrine dedicated to the city's patron deity, where priests performed rituals and made offerings to the gods. 
The ziggurat was not only a place of worship but also a symbol of the city's connection to the divine. The Sumerians believed that the gods descended to earth to dwell in the ziggurat, and that the well-being of the city depended on the favor of its patron deity. The priests who served in the temples held significant power and influence in Sumerian society. They were responsible for performing the daily rituals and ceremonies that were believed to maintain the favor of the gods. These rituals included offerings of food, drink, and other goods, as well as prayers and hymns. The priests also oversaw the distribution of resources, such as grain and livestock, which were often stored in the temples. This control over resources gave the priests considerable economic and political power. The Sumerians also practiced a variety of religious festivals and ceremonies throughout the year, many of which were tied to the agricultural cycle. These festivals were times of communal celebration, where the entire city would come together to honor the gods. One of the most important festivals was the Ikitu, or New Year Festival, which celebrated the renewal of life and the rebirth of the natural world. During the Akitu, elaborate rituals were performed to ensure the fertility of the land and the continued favor of the gods. Sumerian mythology, which was preserved in written texts, provides a window into the religious beliefs and values of the Sumerians. One of the most famous Sumerian myths is the Epic of Gilgamesh, which tells the story of a heroic king's quest for immortality. The epic explores themes of life, death, and the relationship between humans and the gods, and it reflects the Sumerians' beliefs about the nature of existence and the afterlife. In addition to the Epic of Gilgamesh, other important Sumerian myths include the story of Inanna's descent into the underworld, the creation of humanity by Enki, and the Flood myth, which bears striking similarities to the later biblical story of Noah's Arkansas. These myths were not only religious stories but also served as moral and ethical guides for Sumerian society, teaching lessons about the importance of piety, loyalty, and justice. The Sumerians also believed in an afterlife, although their conception of it was not as optimistic as that of some other ancient cultures. The Sumerians believed that after death, the souls of the deceased descended to the underworld, known as the Kur, where they would live a shadowy existence in a dark and dreary realm. The underworld was ruled by the goddess Ereshkigal, and it was a place of no return, where the dead would remain for eternity. The Sumerians did not believe in the possibility of an afterlife filled with joy or reward, rather, they saw it as a continuation of existence in a less desirable form. The importance of religion in Sumerian society cannot be overstated. It was the foundation upon which their cities were built, their laws were made, and their daily lives were organized. The Sumerians' devotion to their gods influenced every aspect of their culture, from their art and architecture to their literature and governance. The ziggurats that dominated their cities were not only religious monuments but also symbols of the power and authority of the priesthood and the divine favor that was believed to protect the city. In conclusion, Sumerian religion and mythology played a central role in shaping the identity and culture of the Sumerian civilization. The belief in a pantheon of gods who controlled the world and the fate of humanity was the cornerstone of Sumerian society, influencing everything from their political structures to their artistic expressions. The rituals, festivals, and myths that the Sumerians developed reflect their deep reverence for the divine and their desire to understand and influence the forces that shaped their lives. The legacy of Sumerian religion and mythology continues to be felt today as many of their stories and concepts have been passed down through the ages and have influenced later cultures and religions. Part 4, The Invention of Writing, Cuneiform The invention of writing stands as one of the most remarkable achievements of the Sumerian civilization, marking a significant leap in human communication and record-keeping. This innovation, known as cuneiform, revolutionized the way information was transmitted and preserved, allowing the Sumerians to document their history, culture, and daily lives in a way that had never been possible before. Cuneiform, 
derived from the Latin word cuneus, meaning wedge, refers to the wedge-shaped marks made on clay tablets using a reed stylus. This system of writing evolved over several centuries, beginning with simple pictographs and gradually becoming more abstract and complex. The earliest forms of cuneiform appeared around 3400 BCE, during the late Uruk period, and were used primarily for administrative purposes, such as recording transactions and keeping inventories. The development of cuneiform was closely tied to the needs of an increasingly complex and urbanized society. As Sumerian cities grew, so did the need for effective methods of communication and record keeping. The rise of trade, the administration of large temple complexes, and the management of agricultural surplus all required accurate and reliable systems for recording information. Cuneiform provided a solution to these challenges, allowing the Sumerians to document everything from economic transactions to legal agreements and religious rituals. The earliest cuneiform tablets were simple in design, featuring pictographs that represented concrete objects such as animals, tools, and food items. These pictographs were used in combination with numerical symbols to record quantities and measurements. For example, a tablet might depict a pictograph of a sheep alongside a numerical symbol to indicate the number of sheep involved in a transaction. This early form of writing was primarily used by temple administrators and merchants to keep track of goods and resources. As the Sumerian society became more complex, so did their writing system. Over time, the pictographs evolved into more abstract symbols, and the number of characters increased to accommodate the growing needs of the Sumerians. By around 3000 BCE, cuneiform had developed into a fully-fledged writing system capable of representing not only concrete objects but also abstract concepts, actions, and even sounds. This allowed for the documentation of more complex information, such as legal codes, religious texts, and literature. One of the most significant advancements in the development of cuneiform was the introduction of phonetic symbols, which represented specific sounds rather than entire words or concepts. This phonetic aspect of cuneiform allowed the Sumerians to write the names of people, places, and gods, as well as to transcribe spoken language more accurately. The combination of logograms, symbols representing words, and phonograms, symbols representing sounds, made cuneiform a versatile and powerful tool for communication. Cuneiform was used for a wide variety of purposes in Sumerian society. One of its most important functions was in the administration of the city-states. Government officials used cuneiform to record taxes, trade transactions, and legal agreements, ensuring that there was a permanent record of these activities. This documentation was essential for the management of resources, the enforcement of laws, and the resolution of disputes. The temples, which were the economic and religious centers of Sumerian cities, also made extensive use of cuneiform. Temple administrators kept detailed records of offerings made to the gods, the distribution of food and goods to the population, and the management of temple estates. These records were often inscribed on clay tablets, which were then stored in archives for future reference. The use of cuneiform in temple administration helped to maintain the economic stability of the city and ensure the continued favor of the gods. Cuneiform also played a crucial role in the development of Sumerian literature and intellectual life. The Sumerians were the first to record their myths, legends, and religious beliefs in written form, preserving their cultural heritage for future generations. The Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the earliest known works of literature, was written in cuneiform and provides valuable insights into Sumerian beliefs about life, death, and the nature of the gods. Other important literary works, such as hymns, prayers, and wisdom texts, were also written in cuneiform and reflect the Sumerians' intellectual and spiritual pursuits. In addition to literature, cuneiform was used for scientific and technical purposes. 
The Sumerians made significant contributions to fields such as mathematics, astronomy, and medicine, and they recorded their knowledge in cuneiform texts. For example, the Sumerians developed a system of mathematics based on the number 60, which is the basis for our modern system of measuring time, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. They also created detailed astronomical records, which were used to develop calendars and predict celestial events. In medicine, cuneiform texts have been found that contain descriptions of symptoms, diagnoses, and treatments for various ailments. The use of cuneiform was not limited to the Sumerians alone. As the Sumerian civilization expanded its influence, cuneiform was adopted by other cultures in the region, including the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. These cultures adapted the cuneiform script to their own languages, ensuring its continued use for many centuries. Cuneiform became the lingua franca of the ancient Near East, used for diplomacy, trade, and communication between different cultures. Despite its widespread use and significance, cuneiform was not an easy script to learn. The complexity of the script, with its hundreds of characters, made it accessible only to a small, educated elite known as scribes. Scribes were highly trained professionals who played a vital role in Sumerian society. They were responsible for recording official documents, copying religious texts, and maintaining archives. The training of scribes was rigorous, often taking many years to complete, and it was typically reserved for the sons of the wealthy and powerful. The invention of writing had a profound impact on Sumerian society and the development of human civilization. Cuneiform allowed for the preservation of knowledge, the administration of complex societies, and the transmission of cultural and religious traditions. It also enabled the Sumerians to develop a sense of history, as they were able to record and reflect on their past experiences and achievements. The written word gave the Sumerians a means of communicating across time and space, connecting them with future generations and other cultures. In conclusion, the invention of cuneiform was a transformative achievement that revolutionized the way the Sumerians communicated and recorded information. From its humble beginnings as a system of pictographs used for accounting, cuneiform evolved into a complex and versatile writing system that played a central role in the administration, culture, and intellectual life of the Sumerians. The legacy of cuneiform can still be seen today in the written languages and record-keeping practices that continue to shape our world. The Sumerians' invention of writing not only preserved their own civilization but also laid the foundation for the development of written communication in human history. Part 5, The Sumerian Economy and Trade The Sumerian economy was one of the most advanced of its time, characterized by a high degree of specialization, extensive trade networks, and a complex system of resource management. The Sumerians were able to build a thriving economy based on agriculture, industry, and trade, which supported the growth and prosperity of their city-states. At the heart of the Sumerian economy was agriculture, which provided the foundation for the civilization's wealth and stability. The fertile land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, often referred to as the Fertile Crescent, allowed the Sumerians to cultivate a variety of crops, including barley, wheat, dates, and flax. Barley was the staple crop and the primary food source for the Sumerians, while wheat was also widely grown and used for making bread and beer. The cultivation of flax provided the raw material for linen, which was used for clothing and trade. The Sumerians developed advanced agricultural techniques to maximize the productivity of their land. One of the most important innovations was the use of irrigation to control the flow of water from the rivers to the fields. The Sumerians built an extensive network of canals, dikes, and reservoirs to manage the water supply, allowing them to grow crops even in the arid climate of southern Mesopotamia. This control over water resources was crucial to the success of Sumerian agriculture and ensured a stable food supply for the population. In addition to crops, 
The Sumerians raised livestock, including sheep, goats, cattle, and pigs. These animals provided meat, milk, wool, and hides, which were used for food, clothing, and trade. The Sumerians also practiced fishing and hunting, supplementing their diet with fish from the rivers and wild game from the surrounding countryside. The surplus of agricultural products allowed the Sumerians to engage in trade, both within their own cities and with neighboring regions. Trade was a vital component of the Sumerian economy, and it played a key role in the exchange of goods, ideas, and culture. The Sumerians established extensive trade networks that connected them with other civilizations in the ancient Near East, including the Indus Valley, Anatolia, and Egypt. The Sumerians traded a variety of goods, both raw materials and finished products. Agricultural products such as grain, dates, and flax were important exports, as were textiles, pottery, and metalwork. The Sumerians were skilled craftsmen and produced high-quality goods that were in demand throughout the region. They also imported goods that were not available in Mesopotamia, such as timber from the forests of Lebanon, copper from Oman, and precious stones from the Indus Valley. The trade networks established by the Sumerians were facilitated by the use of standardized weights and measures, which ensured fair and consistent transactions. The Sumerians developed a system of weights based on the shekel, which was used to measure quantities of grain, silver, and other commodities. They also used a system of measures for length, area, and volume, which was essential for trade, construction, and agriculture. The Sumerians conducted trade both overland and by water. The rivers of Mesopotamia served as important trade routes, allowing the Sumerians to transport goods between cities and to distant regions. They used boats and barges to move large quantities of goods along the rivers, and they developed techniques for navigating the waters and managing the flow of traffic. Overland trade was conducted using pack animals, such as donkeys and camels, and caravans traveled long distances to reach distant markets. One of the key players in the Sumerian economy was the temple, which served as both a religious and economic institution. The temples controlled large amounts of land and resources, and they played a central role in the management of the city's economy. The temple was responsible for collecting taxes, distributing food and goods to the population, and organizing trade. The priests who managed the temple's economic activities held significant power and influence, and the temple's wealth was a major source of the city's prosperity. In addition to the temple, private individuals and families also played a role in the Sumerian economy. Wealthy landowners, merchants, and artisans operated businesses and traded goods, contributing to the overall economic activity of the city. The Sumerians had a concept of private property, and individuals could own land, livestock, and other assets. Contracts and legal agreements were often written in cuneiform on clay tablets, providing a permanent record of transactions and ensuring that property rights were respected. The Sumerians also developed a system of taxation to support the city's infrastructure and governance. Taxes were collected in the form of goods, such as grain, livestock, and textiles, as well as labor. Citizens were required to contribute a portion of their produce to the temple or the government, which was then used to support public works, such as the construction of canals, roads, and walls. Taxes also funded the city's military and administrative functions, ensuring the security and stability of the city-state. The Sumerian economy was not without its challenges. The reliance on irrigation for agriculture made the Sumerians vulnerable to environmental changes, such as droughts and floods. Over time, the overuse of irrigation led to salinization, where the soil became too salty to support crops. This caused agricultural yields to decline, leading to food shortages and social unrest. The Sumerians also faced competition and conflict with neighboring city-states and external enemies, which could disrupt trade and economic stability. Despite these challenges, the Sumerian economy was remarkably resilient, 
and it played a crucial role in the development of their civilization. The wealth generated by agriculture, industry, and trade supported the growth of Sumerian cities, the construction of monumental architecture, and the advancement of arts and sciences. The Sumerians' economic innovations, such as the use of standardized weights and measures, the development of trade networks, and the management of resources, laid the foundation for the economies of later civilizations in Mesopotamia and beyond. In conclusion, the Sumerian economy was a complex and dynamic system that supported the growth and prosperity of one of the world's earliest civilizations. Agriculture provided the foundation for the economy, while trade and industry contributed to the wealth and cultural exchange that defined Sumerian society. The Sumerians' innovations in economic management, resource allocation, and trade had a lasting impact on the development of human civilization and continue to influence economic practices today. The Sumerian economy was not just a means of survival but a driving force behind the achievements and legacy of the Sumerian civilization. Part 6, Law and Governance in Sumer the Sumerian civilization was one of the first to develop complex systems of law and governance, laying the foundation for organized societies and the rule of law in the ancient world. The Sumerians established city-states, each governed by a ruler who was responsible for maintaining order, administering justice, and ensuring the well-being of the population. The development of legal codes and the establishment of governing institutions were key factors in the stability and prosperity of Sumerian society. At the heart of Sumerian governance was the concept of the city-state, an independent political entity centered around a major city and its surrounding territories. Each city-state was a self-contained unit, with its own government, laws, and military. The Sumerian city-states, such as Uruk, Ur, Lagash, and Kish, were often in competition with one another, but they also shared common cultural and religious practices. The ruler of a Sumerian city-state was known as the Ensi, or Lugal, titles that roughly translate to city governor and king, respectively. The Ensi or Lugal was considered both a political and religious leader, believed to be chosen by the gods to govern the city. The ruler's primary responsibilities included overseeing the administration of the city, maintaining public order, and conducting religious ceremonies. The ruler was also responsible for leading the city's military in times of war and for negotiating alliances and treaties with other city-states. The authority of the ruler was supported by a complex bureaucracy, composed of officials and scribes who managed the day-to-day -day affairs of the city-state. These officials were responsible for tasks such as collecting taxes, overseeing public works, administering justice, and managing the distribution of resources. The bureaucracy was essential to the efficient functioning of the city-state, ensuring that the ruler's directives were carried out and that the needs of the population were met. One of the most important aspects of Sumerian governance was the development of legal codes, which provided a framework for the administration of justice and the resolution of disputes. The Sumerians are credited with creating some of the earliest known legal codes, which were written in cuneiform on clay tablets. These legal codes covered a wide range of issues, including property rights, contracts, marriage and family law, criminal offenses, and the rights and duties of individuals. One of the most famous Sumerian legal codes is the Code of Uarnamu, which dates to around 2100 BCE and is considered one of the oldest known law codes in history. The Code of Uarnamu was created by King Uarnamu of Uar and is notable for its emphasis on justice and fairness. The Code established penalties for various crimes, such as theft, assault, and murder, and it also outlined the procedures for resolving disputes and compensating victims. The penalties prescribed by the code were often monetary fines, rather than physical punishment, reflecting the Sumerians' belief in restitution rather than retribution. Another significant legal code from Sumer is the Code of Lipitishtar, which was created by King Lipitishtar of Isin around 1930 BCE. 
Like the Code of Uarnamu, the Code of Lipitishtar addressed a wide range of legal issues, including property rights, contracts, and family law. The Code also provided protections for vulnerable members of society, such as widows and orphans, and it established procedures for the fair distribution of inheritance and property. The Code of Lipitishtar is an example of the Sumerians' commitment to justice and the rule of law, and it served as a model for later legal codes in Mesopotamia. The Sumerians' legal system was based on the principle of lex talionis, or the law of retaliation, which is often summarized by the phrase an eye for an eye. This principle was intended to ensure that punishment was proportional to the offense and that justice was administered fairly. However, the Sumerians also recognized the importance of mitigating factors and allowed for the possibility of leniency or mercy in certain cases. The legal codes often provided for the payment of compensation to victims, rather than harsh physical punishment, as a means of resolving disputes and restoring social harmony. In addition to the formal legal codes, the Sumerians also relied on customary law, which was based on tradition and precedent. Customary law was often unwritten and passed down orally from generation to generation. It played a significant role in the resolution of disputes, particularly in matters related to family law, property, and inheritance. Customary law was often administered by local elders or community leaders, who acted as judges and arbitrators in disputes. The Sumerians also developed a system of courts, where legal disputes could be heard and resolved. The courts were presided over by judges, who were often appointed by the ruler or the temple. These judges were responsible for interpreting the law, hearing evidence, and making decisions in legal cases. The decisions of the court were recorded in writing and preserved as legal precedents for future cases. The courts played a crucial role in maintaining social order and ensuring that justice was administered fairly and consistently. The Sumerian legal system also recognized the importance of oaths and contracts in the administration of justice. Oaths were often used to confirm the truthfulness of statements or to bind individuals to agreements. Contracts were written agreements that outlined the terms and conditions of various transactions, such as the sale of property, the marriage of individuals, or the employment of labor. These contracts were often inscribed on clay tablets and sealed with the party cylinder seals, which served as a form of signature. The Sumerians' commitment to the rule of law and the administration of justice was reflected in their religious beliefs. The Sumerians believed that the gods were the ultimate arbiters of justice and that the ruler was responsible for upholding divine law on earth. The temple played a central role in the administration of justice, with priests often acting as judges or witnesses in legal proceedings. The temple also maintained archives of legal documents, such as contracts, legal codes, and court records, which were preserved for future reference. The legal and governance systems developed by the Sumerians had a profound impact on the development of human civilization. Their emphasis on the rule of law, the administration of justice, and the protection of individual rights laid the foundation for the legal systems of later civilizations, including the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. The Sumerians' legal codes served as models for later law codes, such as the famous Code of Hammurabi, which borrowed heavily from Sumerian legal traditions. In conclusion, the Sumerians were pioneers in the development of law and governance, creating some of the earliest known legal codes and establishing complex systems of administration and justice. Their city-states were governed by rulers who were responsible for maintaining order, administering justice, and ensuring the well-being of their subjects. The Sumerians' commitment to the rule of law and the administration of justice not only contributed to the stability and prosperity of their own civilization but also laid the groundwork for the development of legal and governance systems in later civilizations. The legacy of Sumerian law and governance continues to be felt today, as many of the principles and practices they developed are still reflected in modern legal systems around the world.
Part 7, Sumerian Art and Architecture The art and architecture of the Sumerians stand as a testament to their creativity, craftsmanship, and religious devotion. As one of the earliest civilizations in human history, the Sumerians developed distinctive artistic styles and architectural techniques that not only reflected their cultural values but also influenced subsequent civilizations in the ancient Near East. Sumerian art is characterized by its attention to detail, use of symbolism, and incorporation of religious themes. The Sumerians believed that art was a means of connecting with the divine, and much of their artistic output was created for religious purposes. This is evident in the numerous statues, reliefs, and cylinder seals that depict gods, goddesses, and religious rituals. One of the most iconic forms of Sumerian art is the cylinder seal, a small, cylindrical object made of stone, metal, or clay, engraved with intricate designs. These seals were used to create impressions on clay tablets or envelopes, serving as a form of signature or authentication. The designs on cylinder seals often depicted scenes of worship, mythology, or daily life, and they were highly valued possessions that were often buried with their owners. The craftsmanship of cylinder seals was highly advanced, and the level of detail achieved by Sumerian artisans is remarkable. Statues and figurines were another important aspect of Sumerian art. These were often created as offerings to the gods and placed in temples as a symbol of devotion. Sumerian statues are typically characterized by their stylized, almost abstract forms, with large, almond-shaped eyes, rigid postures, and elaborate hairstyles or headdresses. The most famous example of Sumerian statuary is the Statue of Gudea, a series of statues depicting Gudea, the ruler of the city-state of Lagash. These statues are notable for their serene expression, detailed carving, and inscriptions that describe Gudea's achievements and piety. Sumerian reliefs, or carved images on flat surfaces, were also a significant form of artistic expression. These reliefs were often used to decorate temple walls, stele, stone slabs, and other public monuments. The scenes depicted in Sumerian reliefs frequently portrayed religious ceremonies, battles, or the achievements of rulers. One of the most famous Sumerian reliefs is the Steel of the Vultures, which commemorates a victory of the city-state of Lagash over its rival Umma. The relief shows soldiers marching in formation, carrying spears and shields, while vultures feast on the bodies of the defeated enemies. This relief is notable for its dynamic composition and detailed depiction of military equipment and tactics. The Sumerians were also skilled in the art of pottery, creating a wide variety of ceramic vessels, bowls, and jars that were both functional and decorative. Sumerian pottery is characterized by its geometric patterns, intricate designs, and use of color. Pottery was used for everyday purposes, such as storing food and liquids, but it also played a role in religious rituals and burial practices. Some Sumerian pottery was inscribed with cuneiform writing, providing valuable information about the contents or the owner of the vessel. The architectural achievements of the Sumerians were equally impressive, with their cities dominated by monumental structures that reflected their religious beliefs and social organization. The most famous of these structures are the ziggurats, massive, terrace platforms that served as temples to the gods. Ziggurats were built from mud brick and often reached heights of several stories, with a shrine to the city's patron deity located at the top. The ziggurat was not only a place of worship but also a symbol of the city's connection to the divine, with the gods believed to descend from the heavens to dwell in the temple. The design of ziggurats was highly symbolic, with the terraces representing the stages of creation or the steps leading to the heavens. The most famous ziggurat is the Great Ziggurat of Ur, dedicated to the moon god Nana. This ziggurat, built by King Yuarnamu around 2100 BCE, is one of the best-preserved examples of Sumerian architecture and serves as a testament to the engineering skills and religious devotion of the Sumerians. In addition to ziggurats, 
The Sumerians built a variety of other structures, including palaces, temples, and city walls. Palaces served as the residences of the rulers and their families, as well as administrative centers where government officials conducted their duties. These palaces were often adorned with elaborate carvings, frescoes, and inscriptions that glorified the achievements of the ruler and depicted scenes of daily life, religious rituals, and military conquests. Temples, which were often attached to ziggurats, played a central role in Sumerian religious and social life. The temples were dedicated to the gods and served as places of worship, as well as centers of economic and administrative activity. The priests who managed the temples were responsible for conducting rituals, managing the temple's estates, and overseeing the distribution of food and resources to the population. The temples were often richly decorated with carvings, statues, and reliefs that depicted the gods, religious ceremonies, and offerings. The Sumerians also built impressive city walls, which served both defensive and symbolic purposes. The walls were constructed from mud brick and often featured gates and towers that provided protection against invaders. The construction of city walls was a major undertaking, requiring the labor of thousands of workers and the coordination of resources. The walls were not only a means of defense but also a symbol of the city's power and the authority of its ruler. The art and architecture of the Sumerians were deeply influenced by their religious beliefs, with much of their creative output dedicated to honoring the gods and ensuring the well-being of the city. The Sumerians believed that the gods controlled every aspect of life, from the fertility of the land to the success of military campaigns, and they sought to appease the gods through their art and architecture. This religious devotion is evident in the grandeur and scale of their temples, the intricacy of their carvings, and the symbolism embedded in their artistic creations. In conclusion, the art and architecture of the Sumerians were expressions of their religious beliefs, social organization, and cultural values. Their artistic achievements, from the intricately carved cylinder seals to the monumental ziggurats, reflect the creativity, craftsmanship, and devotion of the Sumerian people. The legacy of Sumerian art and architecture has had a lasting impact on the development of human civilization, influencing the artistic and architectural traditions of subsequent cultures in Mesopotamia and beyond. The Sumerians' contributions to art and architecture continue to be admired and studied today, offering insights into the lives, beliefs, and aspirations of one of the world's earliest civilizations. Part 8. The Role of Women in Sumerian Society Women in Sumerian society played diverse and vital roles, contributing to the social, economic, religious, and familial spheres of their civilization. While Sumerian society was patriarchal, with men occupying most of the positions of power, women were not entirely marginalized. They had certain rights and responsibilities, and some women even rose to prominence in various fields. Understanding the role of women in Sumerian society provides a more nuanced picture of the civilization and highlights the complexity of gender dynamics in the ancient world. The primary role of women in Sumerian society was within the family unit. Women were responsible for managing the household, raising children, and producing goods such as textiles and food. The Sumerians placed a high value on family and kinship, and women played a crucial role in maintaining the stability and continuity of the family. Marriage was a central institution in Sumerian society, and women were expected to fulfill their duties as wives and mothers. Marriages were typically arranged by the families of the bride and groom, with the primary purpose of forming alliances and securing the social and economic standing of the family. In addition to their domestic responsibilities, women in Sumerian society were also involved in economic activities. Many women worked as weavers, spinners, and dyers, producing textiles that were essential to the Sumerian economy. These textiles were used for clothing, trade, and religious offerings. 
Women also engaged in other crafts, such as pottery and basket weaving, and they sometimes ran their own businesses. The involvement of women in economic production was particularly important in urban centers, where the demand for goods and services was high. Some women in Sumerian society held positions of significant influence and authority, particularly in the religious sphere. Priestesses played a vital role in Sumerian religion, serving as intermediaries between the gods and the people. They conducted rituals, managed temple estates, and oversaw the distribution of offerings. The most prominent priestesses, known as N, were often members of the royal family and held considerable power. The N priestess of the moon god Nana in the city of Ur was one of the most important religious figures in Sumer, and she played a key role in the administration of the temple and its resources. One of the most famous women in Sumerian history is Inhejuana, the daughter of King Sargon of Akkad and the high priestess of the moon god Nana in Ur. Inhejuana is credited with being the world's first known author, having composed a series of hymns and poems that have survived to this day. Her works, known as the Sumerian Temple Hymns, are some of the earliest examples of literature and provide valuable insights into Sumerian religion and the role of women in society. Inhejuana's position as both a religious and literary figure highlights the potential for women to achieve prominence and influence in Sumerian society. Women also played a role in the legal and administrative systems of Sumer. While most legal and governmental positions were held by men, women could own property, engage in contracts, and participate in legal proceedings. Sumerian legal texts, such as the Code of Uarnamu and the Code of Lipitishtar, include provisions that address the rights and responsibilities of women. For example, women had the right to inherit property from their parents and could pass it on to their children. They also had the right to engage in business transactions, and some women were active in trade and commerce. The legal system also provided protections for women, particularly in matters related to marriage and family. The Sumerians recognized the importance of marriage as a social institution, and they developed laws to regulate it. These laws addressed issues such as dowries, divorce, and the rights of widows. For example, if a woman's husband died, she had the right to remain in his household and continue to manage the family property. If she chose to remarry, her children from the first marriage would inherit their father's property, ensuring that the family lineage and assets were preserved. Despite the rights and opportunities available to women in Sumerian society, there were also significant limitations. Sumerian society was patriarchal, and men held most of the power and authority. Women were often dependent on their male relatives, particularly their fathers and husbands, and their social status was closely tied to their family connections. Women were also subject to social and cultural expectations that emphasized their roles as wives and mothers, and they had limited opportunities to participate in public life or pursue careers outside the home. However, it is important to note that the experiences of women in Sumerian society were not uniform. Social class, family background, and individual circumstances all played a role in shaping the opportunities and challenges faced by women. For example, women from wealthy or noble families had greater access to education, resources, and social networks, which could enable them to achieve positions of influence. In contrast, women from lower social classes were more likely to work as laborers, servants, or artisans, with fewer opportunities for social mobility. The role of women in Sumerian society was also influenced by religious beliefs and practices. The Sumerians worshipped a pantheon of gods and goddesses, many of whom were female. Goddesses such as Inanna, the goddess of love and war, and Ninhursag, the goddess of fertility and childbirth, were highly revered and played central roles in Sumerian religion. The veneration of these goddesses reflected the importance of fertility, procreation, and the continuity of life in Sumerian society. 
The association of women with these divine figures may have contributed to the respect and reverence afforded to certain women, particularly those who served as priestesses or who were connected to the royal family. In conclusion, women in Sumerian society played diverse and multifaceted roles, contributing to the social, economic, and religious life of their civilization. While Sumerian society was patriarchal and men held most of the positions of power, women were not entirely excluded from public life. They had certain rights and responsibilities, and some women achieved prominence in fields such as religion, literature, and commerce. The role of women in Sumerian society was shaped by a complex interplay of social, cultural, and religious factors, and their contributions were essential to the stability and prosperity of the Sumerian civilization. Understanding the role of women in Sumerian society provides a more complete picture of the civilization and highlights the importance of gender dynamics in shaping the development of human history. Part 9, Warfare and Military Organization in Sumer Warfare played a significant role in the history and development of the Sumerian civilization. The Sumerian city-states were often in competition with one another for resources, territory, and political power, leading to frequent conflicts and the need for organized military forces. The Sumerians developed advanced military strategies, technologies, and organizational structures that enabled them to defend their cities, expand their territories, and influence the broader region of Mesopotamia. The Sumerian city-states were independent political entities, each with its own ruler, government, and military. This fragmentation often led to rivalries and conflicts between neighboring city-states, as they competed for control over fertile land, water sources, and trade routes. The desire to protect and expand their territories was a driving force behind much of the warfare in Sumerian history. One of the earliest and most significant conflicts in Sumerian history was the rivalry between the city-states of Lagash and Umma. This conflict, known as the lagash umma border dispute, centered around the control of a fertile strip of land known as the Guidin. The dispute lasted for several generations and involved a series of battles, raids, and diplomatic maneuvers. The conflict reached its peak during the reign of Ianatum, the ruler of Lagash, who led a successful military campaign against Umma and other rival city-states. Ianatum's victory is commemorated in the Steel of the Vultures, a famous Sumerian relief that depicts the battle and the subsequent victory of Lagash. The Sumerians developed a well-organized and disciplined military structure to support their efforts in warfare. The basic unit of the Sumerian army was the infantry, composed of foot soldiers who were armed with spears, swords, and shields. These soldiers were typically conscripted from the general population, with each city-state requiring its citizens to serve in the military during times of war. The infantry was supported by specialized units, such as archers and slingers, who provided ranged support during battles. One of the most significant military innovations of the Sumerians was the use of the chariot, which was a powerful and mobile platform for warfare. The Sumerian chariot was a two-wheeled vehicle, typically drawn by donkeys or onagers, and manned by a driver and a warrior. The warrior was armed with a spear or bow and used the chariot to charge into enemy lines, disrupting their formations and creating openings for the infantry to exploit. The chariot became a symbol of military power and was often depicted in Sumerian art and literature as the preferred vehicle of kings and gods. The Sumerians also developed advanced fortifications to protect their cities from invasion. City walls were a common feature of Sumerian urban planning, and they were constructed from mud brick, often several meters thick and high. The walls were reinforced with towers and gates, which provided additional defense and allowed for controlled access to the city. In times of war, the city walls served as a critical line of defense, allowing the inhabitants to withstand sieges and attacks from enemy forces. In addition to their military technology and fortifications, the Sumerians employed various strategies and tactics in warfare. 
One common tactic was the use of ambushes and surprise attacks, which allowed Sumerian forces to catch their enemies off guard and gain the upper hand in battle. The Sumerians also practiced psychological warfare, using intimidation and propaganda to weaken the morale of their opponents. For example, the Sumerians would often display the severed heads of defeated enemies on poles or use prisoners of war as laborers in public works projects, sending a clear message of their military superiority. The Sumerian military was closely linked to the political and religious institutions of the city-states. The ruler of the city-state, often referred to as the Ensi or Lugal, was not only the political leader but also the commander-in-chief of the military. The ruler was responsible for leading the army into battle, making strategic decisions, and negotiating peace treaties. The success of the ruler in warfare was seen as a reflection of the favor of the gods, and victorious rulers often dedicated their victories to the gods, offering sacrifices and building temples in their honor. The temple also played a role in the military organization of the city-state. Temples often controlled large amounts of land and resources, which were used to support the military. The priests who managed the temples were responsible for organizing the logistics of warfare, such as the provision of food, weapons, and equipment to the soldiers. The temple also served as a center for religious rituals and ceremonies that were believed to ensure victory in battle. Before going to war, the ruler and the soldiers would often seek the guidance of the gods through divination and offer sacrifices to secure their favor. The impact of warfare on Sumerian society was profound. The constant state of conflict between the city-states led to the development of a warrior class, composed of professional soldiers and nobles who were responsible for the defense of the city-state. This warrior class held significant power and influence, and their status was often tied to their success in battle. The militarization of Sumerian society also had social and economic consequences, as resources were diverted to support the military and the infrastructure needed for warfare. Despite the frequent conflicts, the Sumerian city-states also engaged in diplomacy and alliances to secure their interests. Treaties, marriages, and trade agreements were common tools used by the city-states to build alliances and avoid conflict. The Sumerians recognized the importance of diplomacy in maintaining stability and securing the prosperity of their city-states. However, these alliances were often fragile, and the shifting balance of power between the city-states could quickly lead to renewed hostilities. The legacy of Sumerian warfare and military organization had a lasting impact on the development of Mesopotamian civilization. The military innovations, strategies, and organizational structures developed by the Sumerians were adopted and refined by later civilizations, such as the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. The concept of the city-state as a political and military entity continued to shape the history of the ancient Near East, influencing the development of empires and the rise and fall of powerful dynasties. In conclusion, warfare and military organization were central to the history and development of the Sumerian civilization. The Sumerians' ability to organize, equip, and lead military forces enabled them to defend their city-states, expand their territories, and influence the broader region of Mesopotamia. The innovations in military technology, strategy, and organization developed by the Sumerians had a lasting impact on the history of warfare and continue to be studied and admired today. The role of warfare in Sumerian society also highlights the complex interplay between military power, political authority, and religious beliefs in the development of early civilizations. Part 10, Science and Technology in Sumer the Sumerians were pioneers in the fields of science and technology, making significant contributions that laid the groundwork for future advancements in human civilization. Their innovations in mathematics, astronomy, medicine, and agriculture reflect their deep understanding of the natural world and their ability to solve complex problems through observation, experimentation, and invention. 
One of the most important areas of Sumerian scientific achievement was mathematics. The Sumerians developed a sophisticated mathematical system based on the number 60, known as the sexagesimal system. This system allowed for the calculation of complex problems and was used in a variety of applications, including trade, construction, and astronomy. The Sumerians were the first to develop a place value system, where the value of a number is determined by its position in a sequence. This innovation was a major advancement in mathematical thinking and laid the foundation for the development of arithmetic and algebra. The sexagesimal system also had practical applications in daily life. The Sumerians used it to create a system of measurement that was used to quantify everything from land and grain to time and weight. The division of the day into 24 hours, each hour into 60 minutes, and each minute into 60 seconds is a direct legacy of the Sumerian mathematical system. The Sumerians also developed a calendar based on the lunar cycle, which was used to organize agricultural activities, religious festivals, and civic events. Astronomy was another area of scientific achievement for the Sumerians. Their interest in the movements of celestial bodies was driven by both practical and religious concerns. The Sumerians observed the stars, planets, and the phases of the moon to develop a calendar and to predict important events, such as the timing of the flood season, which was crucial for agriculture. They also associated the movements of the celestial bodies with the actions of the gods, and their observations were used for divination and the interpretation of omens. The Sumerians created detailed star charts and developed a system of constellations that were later adopted by the Babylonians and other ancient cultures. They also made accurate observations of the movements of the planets, particularly Venus, and recorded these observations on clay tablets. These records were used to develop early forms of astrology, which linked the positions of the stars and planets to the fate of individuals and the outcomes of events. In the field of medicine, the Sumerians made important contributions to the understanding and treatment of diseases. Sumerian medicine was a combination of practical treatments and spiritual practices, reflecting their belief in the close connection between the physical and spiritual worlds. The Sumerians believed that illness was often caused by supernatural forces, such as demons or the displeasure of the gods, and they used a combination of prayers, rituals, and medicinal treatments to cure the sick. Sumerian medical texts, written in cuneiform on clay tablets, provide valuable insights into their understanding of the human body and disease. These texts describe a wide range of medical conditions, such as wounds, infections, and internal diseases, and they outline various treatments, including the use of herbs, poultices, and surgery. The Sumerians were skilled in the use of plants and natural substances for medicinal purposes, and they developed a pharmacopoeia that included ingredients such as honey, myrrh, and opium. The Sumerians also made advancements in the field of surgery, particularly in the treatment of wounds and injuries. They developed techniques for cleaning and dressing wounds, setting broken bones, and performing amputations. Sumerian surgeons were often priests, who combined their medical knowledge with religious rituals to heal the sick. The Sumerians' holistic approach to medicine, which integrated physical, spiritual, and environmental factors, influenced the development of medical practices in later civilizations. Agriculture was another area where the Sumerians made significant technological advancements. The fertile land of Mesopotamia allowed for the cultivation of a variety of crops, but the success of agriculture depended on the careful management of water resources. The Sumerians developed an extensive system of irrigation, which included canals, dikes, and reservoirs, to control the flow of water from the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. This system allowed the Sumerians to grow crops even in the arid climate of southern Mesopotamia and ensured a stable food supply for the population. The Sumerians also developed tools and techniques to improve agricultural productivity. 
The plow, one of the most important agricultural inventions, was used to prepare the soil for planting. The Sumerians were the first to develop a seed plow, which allowed for the simultaneous planting of seeds and plowing of the soil, increasing efficiency and reducing labor. The Sumerians also practiced crop rotation, which helped to maintain soil fertility and reduce the risk of crop failure. In addition to their advancements in agriculture, the Sumerians made significant contributions to the development of engineering and construction techniques. The construction of large-scale public works, such as ziggurats, temples, and city walls, required advanced knowledge of materials, tools, and structural principles. The Sumerians developed techniques for working with mud brick, the primary building material in Mesopotamia, and they were skilled in the use of wooden scaffolding, ramps, and levers to construct large and complex structures. The Sumerians also made advancements in transportation, particularly in the development of the wheel. The invention of the wheel was a major technological breakthrough that revolutionized transportation and trade. The Sumerians used the wheel to create carts and chariots, which allowed for the faster and more efficient movement of goods and people. The wheel also played a role in the development of pottery, with the invention of the potter's wheel enabling the mass production of ceramic vessels. The Sumerians' contributions to science and technology were not limited to practical applications, they also had a deep interest in the philosophical and theoretical aspects of knowledge. The Sumerians developed a rich tradition of scholarship, with schools and libraries dedicated to the study of mathematics, astronomy, medicine, and literature. Scribes, who were trained in the art of writing, played a central role in the preservation and transmission of knowledge, copying texts and compiling records that were stored in temple archives. In conclusion, the Sumerians were pioneers in the fields of science and technology, making significant contributions that laid the foundation for future advancements in human civilization. Their innovations in mathematics, astronomy, medicine, agriculture, and engineering reflect their deep understanding of the natural world and their ability to solve complex problems through observation, experimentation, and invention. The legacy of Sumerian science and technology continues to be felt today, as many of their discoveries and inventions have influenced the development of human knowledge and shaped the course of history. The fall of the Sumerian civilization did not mean the complete disappearance of Sumerian culture. Many aspects of Sumerian society, including their language, religion, and legal traditions, were absorbed and preserved by the succeeding civilizations in Mesopotamia. The Sumerian language continued to be used as a liturgical and scholarly language for centuries, and Sumerian literature and mythology were incorporated into the cultural heritage of the region. The legacy of the Sumerians lived on through the achievements of the Babylonians, Assyrians, and other Mesopotamian peoples who built upon the foundations laid by the Sumerians. In conclusion, the decline and fall of the Sumerian civilization were the result of a complex interplay of environmental, social, political, and external factors. The challenges of salinization, warfare, political instability, and foreign invasions all contributed to the weakening of the Sumerian city-states and their eventual conquest by the Akkadians and Amorites. However, the legacy of the Sumerians endured, influencing the development of later civilizations in Mesopotamia and leaving a lasting impact on human history. The story of the Sumerian civilization serves as a reminder of the fragility of even the most advanced societies and the importance of adaptability and resilience in the face of changing circumstances. Part 12, Legacy of the Sumerians The Sumerians, as one of the world's earliest civilizations, left an indelible mark on the development of human history. Their contributions to writing, law, religion, urbanization, and technology laid the foundations for many of the institutions and practices that continue to shape our world today. The legacy of the Sumerians extends far beyond their own time, influencing the civilizations that followed them and leaving a lasting impact on the course of history. 
One of the most significant aspects of the Sumerian legacy is their invention of writing. The development of cuneiform by the Sumerians was a groundbreaking achievement that revolutionized the way information was recorded, preserved, and transmitted. Writing allowed the Sumerians to document their history, culture, and daily lives in a way that had never been possible before. The invention of writing enabled the development of complex administrative systems, legal codes, and literature, all of which were essential to the functioning of Sumerian society. The influence of cuneiform extended beyond the Sumerians, as it was adopted and adapted by subsequent civilizations in Mesopotamia, including the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. The Sumerians' invention of writing laid the foundation for the development of written communication in human history and continues to be one of their most enduring legacies. The Sumerians also made significant contributions to the development of law and governance. The legal codes created by the Sumerians, such as the Code of Uarnamu, established principles of justice, fairness, and the rule of law that influenced the legal systems of later civilizations. The concept of a legal code that outlined the rights and responsibilities of individuals, as well as the penalties for various offenses, was a major advancement in the development of organized societies. The Sumerians' emphasis on justice and the protection of individual rights laid the groundwork for the legal traditions that continue to be central to modern societies. In the realm of religion, the Sumerians developed a complex and sophisticated belief system that deeply influenced the spiritual and cultural life of Mesopotamia. The Sumerian pantheon of gods and goddesses, their religious rituals, and their mythological stories were adopted and adapted by later civilizations, including the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. The Sumerians' religious beliefs and practices also had a lasting impact on the development of Western religious thought, as many of their myths and symbols were incorporated into the religious traditions of the ancient Near East and beyond. The Sumerians were also pioneers in the field of urbanization, creating some of the world's first true cities. The development of cities such as Uruk, Ur, and Lagash marked a significant shift in human society, as people began to live in large, complex communities with specialized labor, social hierarchies, and centralized governance. The Sumerians' innovations in urban planning, architecture, and public administration laid the foundation for the development of cities and civilizations throughout history. The concept of the city-state, as an independent political entity centered around a major city, was a Sumerian innovation that influenced the political organization of later civilizations in Mesopotamia and beyond. In addition to their contributions to writing, law, religion, and urbanization, the Sumerians made significant advancements in the fields of science and technology. Their innovations in mathematics, astronomy, medicine, and agriculture were groundbreaking and laid the foundation for future developments in these fields. The Sumerians' use of the sexagesimal system, their observations of celestial bodies, and their development of medical treatments and agricultural techniques all had a lasting impact on the development of human knowledge and technology. The Sumerians' achievements in these areas demonstrate their deep understanding of the natural world and their ability to solve complex problems through observation, experimentation, and invention. The legacy of the Sumerians is also evident in their cultural and artistic achievements. The Sumerians were skilled craftsmen, artists, and architects, and their works of art and architecture continue to be admired and studied today. The ziggurats, statues, reliefs, and cylinder seals created by the Sumerians are not only examples of their artistic talent but also reflect their religious beliefs, social organization, and cultural values. The Sumerians' contributions to art and architecture influenced the development of artistic traditions in Mesopotamia and beyond, and their works continue to inspire and inform our understanding of ancient cultures. The influence of the Sumerians extended beyond their own civilization, 
as their ideas, innovations, and cultural practices were adopted and adapted by the civilizations that followed them. The Akkadians, Babylonians, Assyrians, and other Mesopotamian peoples built upon the foundations laid by the Sumerians, incorporating their language, religion, legal codes, and administrative practices into their own societies. The Sumerians' legacy also reached beyond Mesopotamia, as their innovations in writing, law, and urbanization influenced the development of civilizations in the broader ancient Near East and beyond. In conclusion, the legacy of the Sumerians is a testament to their creativity, ingenuity, and resilience. Their contributions to writing, law, religion, urbanization, science, and technology have had a profound and lasting impact on the development of human civilization. The Sumerians' achievements continue to be studied and admired today, offering insights into the origins of many of the institutions and practices that define our world. The story of the Sumerians is a reminder of the enduring influence of ancient civilizations and the importance of preserving and understanding our shared cultural heritage. As we continue to explore and learn from the legacy of the Sumerians, we gain a deeper appreciation for the contributions of this remarkable civilization to the history of humanity. Conclusion The Sumerian civilization, one of the earliest in human history, made profound and lasting contributions to the development of writing, law, religion, urbanization, science, technology, and culture. Their innovations laid the foundation for many of the institutions and practices that continue to shape our world today. The legacy of the Sumerians extends far beyond their own time, influencing the civilizations that followed them and leaving an indelible mark on the course of human history. The invention of writing, the development of legal codes, the creation of cities, and the advancement of scientific knowledge are just a few of the many achievements that define the Sumerian legacy. Their contributions to art, architecture, and religion have also had a lasting impact, influencing the development of subsequent civilizations in Mesopotamia and beyond. The Sumerians' ability to adapt to changing circumstances, solve complex problems, and create enduring institutions is a testament to their ingenuity and resilience. As we reflect on the legacy of the Sumerians, we are reminded of the importance of understanding and preserving our shared cultural heritage. The study of ancient civilizations like the Sumerians provides valuable insights into the origins of many of the institutions and practices that define our world today. By exploring the achievements and challenges of the Sumerians, we gain a deeper appreciation for the contributions of this remarkable civilization to the history of humanity. The story of the Sumerians is not just a story of the past, it is a story that continues to inspire and inform our understanding of the present and the future. The legacy of the Sumerians serves as a reminder of the enduring influence of ancient civilizations and the importance of preserving and understanding our shared cultural heritage. As we continue to explore and learn from the legacy of the Sumerians, we gain a deeper appreciation for the contributions of this remarkable civilization to the history of humanity. The Sumerians' achievements continue to be studied and admired today, offering insights into the origins of many of the institutions and practices that define our world. In conclusion, the legacy of the Sumerians is a testament to their creativity, ingenuity, and resilience. Their contributions to writing, law, religion, urbanization, science, and technology have had a profound and lasting impact on the development of human civilization. The Sumerians' achievements continue to be studied and admired today, offering insights into the origins of many of the institutions and practices that define our world. The story of the Sumerians is a reminder of the enduring influence of ancient civilizations and the importance of preserving and understanding our shared cultural heritage. As we continue to explore and learn from the legacy of the Sumerians, we gain a deeper appreciation for the contributions of this remarkable civilization to the history of humanity.